G'day and welcome to Wine Week. I'm Danny. And I'm Brad. We're going to kick off with a wine this week of a varietal that we don't actually do a lot of. No, we don't. No. A Pinot Grigio. Mm. This one from Christian Del Zotto and the Del Zotto family <laughs> up in the King Valley area of Victoria. Now, the King Valley's turned into a real hot spot for Italian varietals. Mm. And there's even uh, at least one Saparavi, mm. a, uh, a Russian grape varietal being grown up in the region. But... The Del Zottos, they certainly know how to handle some of that Italian fruit. Mm. And this, absolutely gorgeous, without a doubt. Sub $20, and look, most of the Pinot Grigios, Pinot Gris in Australia are kind of sitting below that point. Because um, it's reasonably easy for them to turn out, and a great spot for what is really a relatively light-bodied wine. There's not heaps and heaps of flavour. And for a white, often that's exactly what you're looking for, something that's not going to overpower that little antipasto plate that you're putting it together with. And for 16 to 18 sort of dollars, the Del Zotto Pinot Grigio, absolutely lovely. Mm. And there's a nice spot up there in the King Valley, some, uh, some lovely little spots. Mm. Uh, now, back to Barossa here and, and Barossa and Shiraz, and from a producer that we have certainly featured in the past, but not for a little while, this is the guys at Thorn Clark. Um, now you might recall we've had a look at a few of their different wines, they've got a number of different price points and the, uh, the Sandpiper range, which we've got the Sandpiper Shiraz here, this is the entry level stuff. Um, but again, don't mistake entry level with, uh, with poor quality because uh, these guys turn out some great stuff across the whole spectrum. Um, and look, this one, we managed to pick up this bottle for around about $13, $14, uh, which is, you know, your really everyday drinking sort of wine. And that's exactly the style this is made in. It's, it's not meant to be laid down for years and years and years. It's meant to be opened up and enjoyed now. And it's really approachable. It's, a, it's 2009. Um, these guys managed to get some good fruit out of their 2009, which is a very hot vintage. So um, they did well there. But um, look, if you're looking for an easy, approachable Barossa and Shiraz with plenty of flavour, the, uh, the Thorn Clark guys doing some great work with the, the Sandpiper. Year in, year out doing good stuff in that range. Lovely. Um, now, Cabernet Sauvignon. When we talk about Cabernet Sauvignon, we often talk about Coonawarra and Margaret River. Again and again and again, we drag out cabs from those regions because, let's face it, they do such great cabs there. Mm. But this, the Balgowny Estate, Bendigo region, mm. and once again, beautiful, <laughs> gorgeous. We might have done this on the show years and years ago, um, yeah. but it's been a while, and this, I really, really like this. Every time I open up a bottle, I think to myself, why aren't I drinking more of it? Because it's such great. But it tends to get overshadowed by the hype of Coonawarra and Margaret River. But this region, Bendigo, up through the Pyrenees, there are some great Cabernets coming out of that region. You go up to the Pyrenees and you've got the Dalwini, gorgeous. The Balgowny, around about $30 odd dollars, and it's really lovely. Supple, black currant not too over the top with tannins, ready to drink now, and five to 10 years maximum sort of cellaring will make it a gorgeous drop. So, Balgowny, don't discount. The Bendigos. <laughs> the Bendigos. And they've got also a nice cellar door in the Yarra Valley as well. They so, do. Uh, both you can taste them there too. Both regions, they've got beautiful cellar doors. The, the Yarra Valley's a real spa sort of outfit. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Very upmarket. Anyhow, that's it for this week on Wine Week, and we'll see you all again next week. See you next week.